this second term. They could look hard to beat, but we're about to find out. As the second quarter gets underway, and the tap coming from, well, you'd say Wild just got there, was looking for Machete. Here's Richards, who's now doing some more work in the middle, potentially off half back again now. As his side uh, up against the wind. Tap from Howard. That ball not going anywhere again. One thing, Hurstbridge were able to win that clearance battle in that first quarter, and it's just become so much more important now because if Greensboro start winning these clearances, it's a long way back in the territory battle. Which they've done here through Zach McCubbin. Bouncing ball, clever tap from Howard. Seavers, Brody Glenn misses to the right-hand side. And the opening score inside the first minute, 2-2-14 two, two, to 3-5-23. Already some positional moves here with Seavers playing in the forward line for Greensboro. So, obviously the wind impacting a few of those players, but nonetheless, it's Chris McCabe called to play on. Very, very high ball towards the outer side. The clays came from a couple deep. Couldn't impact the contest. We'll have a boundary throw in between wing well, and half forward for the Bridges. I think that's the versatility we were talking about for Greensboro pre-game. Um, you've got Brindley down back, so that allows you know a player like Sievers to move forward. You've got already intercept markers such as Jack Johnson, um, Will McFawn down back, of course. So it just opens up so much of the field and so many options for Matthew Hyde. Tap coming from Howard, although it was a bit of a shallow boundary throw in. Cookson caught in the tackle. We'll go again. Minute and three quarters gone in this second term. Tap from Brindley, who did the ruck work by the looks of it there. Clearance coming from Brody Glenn. Sends it inside 50, almost off, or almost taking the mark instead. There was Seavers, but umpire says I'll have it. Seavers has moved forward at times this year. Maybe not necessarily for a wind reason, but he's capable of finding the big sticks when required. Here's Taylor. Was looking there for Stewart, but it's going to be brought back inside 50 by Greensboro. He is Seavers, ducking and weaving and missing to the right. 2 3 15 now, the Borough. Hurstbridge 3 5 23, so the margin back to eight points. As Hurstbridge will look to clear it out of defensive 50, that kick not a great one for Barbera. One back by Johnston. He goes to the pocket here with this kick. Tried to get to Glenn. McCubbin has kept that ball in play. Glenn, chance here now for Greensboro. Can it get it back through Ben Fisher? It's out of bounds. We're not on the full. Stayed in play. We'll have a boundary throw in deep inside 50 for Greensboro. And these stoppages inside the forward 50 just would be knowingly dangerous for, for Hurstbridge when you've got a player like Brody Glenn just hovering around these stoppages. We know how explosive he can be in front of goal. Ball gets tossed up. Smith's going to go off the ground <laughs> in midair. He stuck his foot out to contest that ruck contest, but it went out of bounds on the full. Does that count as a hit out? <laughs> well, no, but it would have counted as an unbelievable goal if that Certainly had a found its way through. <laughs> that would have been a first I would, have, I would have thought. I don't think I've ever seen a goal come from that avenue, but nonetheless, not to be. Liam Middleton clears it away. And it'll be punched out of bounds for a boundary throw in between wing and half forward for Greensboro. Similar signs already. Um, Hurstbridge are doing what Greensboro did in the first quarter. They're choosing to use the outer side, just that extra bit of wind advantage to get a bit of ter territory, but it's almost mirroring what's happening because Greensboro now are being able to hold that ball up just outside that forward 50 on the outer side. Ball gets tossed back into play. Tap from Howard coming through like a steam train. His machete. He found Perrin. That kick not great, although the wind did play a role in that. Great pressure coming from Stewart, though, as Greensboro look to win possession of the footy. And I reckon... No, umpire says he'll have it. Great stuff there from Darcy Stewart, because Greensboro could have easily won possession and gone back the other way, but we now have a stoppage in the corner of the centre square. Here's Blake Fitzgerald. Just got boots a ball, which worked out for Cookson, but he couldn't get rid of the ball correctly. So holding the ball is the call. And Cookson will give it away to Hasler, who will have it at half-back for Greensboro. He'll look to assess his options. Chipping ball to Seavers. Works okay. Seavers, he's got Hasler, who can play on. Sends it inside 50. 
Offhand, still a chance though for Greensboro if they can win the footy back. Although the umpire says, I'll have it. It was a really pl- smart, uh, that was a really smart lead from Angus Severs. Just let up into the middle of the ground, out, allowing Greensboro to use the corridor and get that inside 50. Glenn tried to get the handball away to Ferranato. It got to Ferranato and he was caught high. So he lost his footing, did Christian Ferranato, but he was caught high as he went to ground. And the 19-year-old can make it a two-point ball game. Such a important moment for Greensboro. They've had a few early chances already uh, that have gone awry, but it would be a statement to get this goal at almost the six-minute mark of this second quarter and really take advantage of that wind while they've got it. 35 metres out. Maybe a 40-degree angle to speak of for Christian Ferranato. Comes in, and he's got it. So Ferranato converts the set shot, and the margin's back to two points. 3-3-21 to 3-5-23. Six minutes gone, second term. And an important goal for Greensboro chances today. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, I think accuracy is going to be so vital uh, for both teams. You've just got to make the most of your opportunities when you've got them because it is a pretty contested game. Marks inside forward 50 haven't come easy as of yet. Um, so it's an important one there when you get an opportunity like that from a free kick to take it. And Ferranato, the 19-year-old, already looks to be such a pivotal player in this Greensboro lineup and a leader. Back in the middle then. Andronaco getting the first use, but can't go anywhere after being tackled immediately. So I have another stoppage straight in the middle. Andronaco almost getting there again. Clearance from Ferranato. Didn't get put to ball. Andronaco, though, got his handball away, but went straight to the bridges, which that kick went straight to Aiton Delaney. So Greensboro will rebound. Looking towards McCubbin. Had it punched away from him by Richards. Here's Barbera. That ball's gone out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Umpire says he ducked into the tackle, despite being caught high. On the boundary throw in right in front of our commentary position. Be Howard and Wild. Ball gets tossed back into play. Howard got a good fist of it. McCubbin confronted. Machete. Fitzgerald on the run, getting the handball received for McCabe. Now through the middle is Agosta. Agosta takes a bounce towards half forward with the kick in the direction of the Clays. He's got Fitzgerald chasing him. The Clays can't get there before the boundary line. We'll have a ball up inside 54. Hurst. I would have liked to have seen the Clays just lead a bit more centrally there because he was leading out wide and just forced the kick wide and um, Hurstbridge. With clean disposal, could have had a shot on goal there, but not to be for the Bridges. Ball will be tossed back into play. Goes over the head of both rucks. Machete got an important hand onto it. Got the one-two from DeClace. And he sends it inside 50 to the Kent direction, but he was held without the footy. So despite some work there, I think, from McFawn. Nick Kent. Who he says is going to be a key player with no Naylor or Jordan in this side. We'll kick from 40 metres out to get one against the win from the Bridges. And it will be his first shot on goal for the afternoon. And of course with Naylor out, his role becomes so much more pivotal. Um, and that's the first contest where he's just been able to take control. And if you're a Bridges fan, you want to see more of that this afternoon. Kent from 35 metres out. That hangs in the air for a very long time. And then Hart spoils it through for a rush behind. First bridge move to 3-6-24. Greensboro 3-3-21. Their first score of the second term, Hurstbridge. Kent put a lot of air on that kick. And just with the wind, uh, you probably feel he needed to go a bit more low and penetrative. As to make the distance. Long ball from the Greensboro kick out. Gets all the way to centre wing. And then Hasler with a second spiralling torpedo. Found Glenn who was at the back of a one-on-one contest. Defeated Taylor. Oh, play on. He got off his mark. Taylor made him pay. But it's a dangerous oh. tackle. Which is the right call because Glenn is in a lot of pain. 
And Glenn very slow to his feet. Hopefully he's okay, Brody Glenn, because we know how good a form he's been in on the back of five goals last week. He's kicked nine in his last two. Back on his feet, which is great. Great to see. But you could see Taylor frustrated by giving away the one-on-one. -on -one. But then as soon as he played on, he took his anger out on Glenn, who, yeah, just slung him straight and, to the ground. And it was silly because that, that play on uh, gave him an opportunity to get back into the contest. But um, Glenn can get the ball again and really punish that mistake from Hurstbridge. So Brody Glenn on a slight angle will kick from 40 metres out to give Greensboro the lead in this elimination final. Glenn comes in and he's got the goal. No problems for Brody Glenn, who kicks his second. And Greensboro, 4-3-27. Lead Hurstbridge, 3-6-24, 11 minutes gone. Second term. And Glenn is such a clutch player, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, he's someone you don't want to be lining up on in that situation. Um, he just makes you pay. And you felt like even if that ball went to ground... Glenn would still find a way to, to pick it up and run into goal. So such an important moment for Greensboro to reclaim the lead to that three-point margin um, just into the 11th minute mark of this second term. And so far, Greensboro have been able to take this, their chances in this second term. So back in the middle we go. Tap from Howard straight to Andronaco. He's got Ferranato who was able to grab that footy. And then ducked into the tackle. So we'll have a ball up. Hear that wind. The effects, Mike. It's in the favour of Greens Bar for his second term. I think I have a stoppage. I like the move of Indranako into the midfield. Um, he's a player who's got a lot of foot speed. And if you get the ball in his hands, he can be dangerous. Machete can't get through either. So we'll go again. 12 and a quarter minutes gone. So the Barra. All the goals in this second term so far. Albeit just two. Panem. And we'll have another stoppage by the looks of it. Just turning into a real tussle here. The pressure we'd expect of an elimination final. Well, you wouldn't mind from a Hurstridge point of view if it stays like this. If Greensboro don't get any more goals on the board with this win. Absolutely. Because it seems like the bar are pressing, even if Hurstbridge don't get any scores themselves. I think, yeah, the, the most important thing for Hurstbridge is just keep this margin close in this second term and really give it a go in the third quarter. There'll be a clearance here from the Bridges. They go towards the outer side. It bounces for Anderson. He's up against Aiton Delaney. Anderson wins out. Swings around on the left boot. Sends it towards half forward. And the mark taken is by Cam Wilde. Wants to go deep. He's got Kent one-on-one -on -one inside 50. He almost evaded everybody. Fitzgerald got a hand onto it for Greensboro. And then he just absorbs the tackle. The umpire will call for it. But we're deep inside 50 for the Bridges. And it's a big opportunity here for Hurstbridge because inside 50s have been fleeting in this quarter. Um, so it's really important moment. But the tap from Howard goes straight to Marty Fitzgerald although that kick wasn't great went straight back to Kai DeClays who sends it again deep inside 50 it's spoiled out of bounds not getting there in time was Aiton Delaney we'll have a boundary throw in looks like DeClays is just going to hover on the outside of this 50 just waiting for this kick out if Greensboro do get it and just being that tall option to intercept Mark so it's going to be Brindley and Kent to do the ruck work. It's not a combination we've seen today. The two men that are capable of filling in the role. Brindley got a tap from the back. Machete almost stole the footy from an opponent. Here's Brindley again. Trying to spin away was Campbell Walsh, but not doing. 14 and a half minutes gone, second term. Greensboro with the only two goals of this second quarter. And lead it at this stage by... Three points. Here's Aiton Delaney to Johnston. He's able to get that clearing kick for Greensboro, although straight into the waiting arms of Liam Middleton. So he's got it defensive side, centre square. He'll look to go towards the outer side. He's got the clay, although it's cut off by Seavers. 
Now Greensboro can go. Not many numbers forward. That kick almost cut off by Agosta. Read the bounce okay and then got the bounce again the second time. He finds Kai the Clace again. Chipping ball okay to Wild. Sends it inside 50. Low ball. Worked okay for Johnston. Although that handball, not a great one. McCall from the boundary. Great, great smother coming there from the Greensboro defender. And then they all run out of room. And Good pressure there from both sides there, Tim. Certainly was. And Jack Johnston was just in two minds there. He knew if he ran that ball over the boundary, then it was probably going to be called deliberate. So it was forced to keep it in. And was luckily enough, even though the ball was turned over, that it's only a boundary throw in in this defensive 50 for Greensboro. Paul gets tossed up again. Secondary hit out coming from Zach Hart, but it goes back to Liam Middleton. Over to Kai De Clace. Umpire says not 15. Found room when there wasn't any. Snap towards goal is across the face, and Tom O'Sullivan will have no problems. He's in defensive 50. And we'll just switch it, and Johnston can reset. Booming ball. Okay for Seavers. Dropped the mark, but had time to recover. Gets past Richards with ease, and then Seavers sends it to two centre-half forward, where Blake Fitzgerald can go for Hurstbridge. But there's a lot of numbers around this footy. One of them was Fisher for Greensboro. Great pressure against Stewart here. Richards. Hymas. And he'll just chip this one towards the outer side. Lee Middleton again. Goes down the line. Again, cut off by Seavers. So he's playing high up the ground, but still playing his intercept role pretty well. Certainly is. Um, just being able to rebound the ball back towards Seavers has had a number of intercepts in the last couple of minutes. Him and Johnston, I would love to know the number <laughs> between those two because it's been exceptional. Absolutely. Boundary throwing on the outer side. Ball gets tossed up. There's Kent and Brindley again, but it'll be Cam Wild. Wins the clearance here for Hurstbridge. Ball inside 50, not a great one. Cut off by McFawn. McFawn decides to go down the line. It was Aiton Delaney, in fact. And Brindley with a really strong mark overhead. And now they can move Greensboro. That high ball's going to drift the footy well inside 50. And Smith... Prevails in the one-on-one -on -one contest. We haven't seen much of him today, but Jamie Smith can go back and he'll look for his 31st goal of the season. Yeah, you're right. We, we really haven't seen much of him today. It's the first real opportunity where he's been able to run and get it a mark in a contest um, because it hasn't been that sort of game where leads have been benefited from. But from this distance with the wins... Jamie Smith looking for his 31st goal of this season. Against his old side as well in Hurstbridge. Smith comes in from 45 out. That's drifting across the face and will be a behind. So Greensboro moved to 4 4 28. Hurstbridge a 3 6 24. 18 and a quarter minutes gone. Second term. Behind us. As we know and as we've seen, he's got a big boot on him. He's able to get it well outside defensive 50. DeClace got the intercept. Here's Blake Fitzgerald. Back to DeClace. Did really well to keep running there. Wants to go a bit more in ball with the kick. Machini was running back with the flight, but couldn't get there originally. Then did well to recover. Got it over to Cam Wild. And this transitional play might work for McCall. And Nick McCall marks inside 50. It's pretty identical to what we saw from the Borough earlier in the, in the game. It certainly is. Um... Hurstbridge have looked very good on transition in this quarter. Um, they just need to find a way to make that translate onto the scoreboard because this would be massive going into time on to get the lead back with the win coming in the third quarter. It's a big kick for McCall here. McCall comes in, tough angle, and just across the face. Actually kept in play by Brindley and then rushed through. And the deficit reduces to three points for Hurstbridge. They're 3 7 25. Hurstbridge 4 4 28. There's Johnston again with the duties. We'll clear it away, and that bouncing ball will trickle all the way towards the forward half. And it only spill at the back, okay, for McCubbin. And now Greensboro can move. Seavers is at half forward. Has he got any runners? He's going to handball over to Smith. He's got it over to a teammate as well. In I think that may have been. 
Aiden Delaney. Mark not taken by McCubbin. Still a chance for Ben Fisher. Now another chance for Zach McCubbin, and he misses to the left. And another behind for the Barra. Well, I'm not sure that last minute of play will make any highlight reels. Um, a few strange errors from both teams. Hurstbridge just coughing the ball up when they really should have intercepted that initial kick out from Jack Johnson. Greensboro couldn't quite make them pay. Now the Clays marks from that kick in and looks to go quickly. He's got Plain who takes the mark. Forward of center, forward of the wing on the outer side. Plain goes inside. He's got Barbera on his own coming in at the last second. The spoil was Aiton Delaney. But the Bridges again able to keep this ball moving forward. Cook's a tough one to mark. Machete was front and center. That ball not going anywhere for the time being. Umpire just happy to take it again. And Blake Fitzgerald just hovering around this stoppage. I think Hurstbridge fans would like to see him get a bit more involved in this contest. Spills out the back of the pack. And Hurstbridge can go again here. Cookson, left foot ball on the pain of 50. Goes to the Perrin direction. And he takes a nice mark on the lead. Cooper Perrin still looking for his first goal of the game. He had a shot in that first quarter from a similar distance on the same side of the ground on the other side of the ground apologies and that one just drifted to the left hand side so let's see how he goes with this kick to put Hurstbridge back in front at the 21 and a half minute mark of this second term Perrin right idea because it swung back a long way but still missed to the left hand side 3-8 26 to 4 5 29. So the borough lead, but Hurstbridge still in a good position despite being against the wind. As Greensboro have had the ball in their defensive half there for the last few minutes of this quarter. Johnston will clear it away. Up there was Smith. Stewart wanted to claim the mark. Umpire said it was touched, and we'll go again. Not far away from half time, you would think, in this elimination final. Tap coming from Wild. Did well to get a hand onto it. Here's Cam Wild, who disposed of the footy incorrectly. The Borough want to move quickly through Ferronado. Didn't have much going for them, though. And now Cookson lets them know about it. Yeah, and tackles him out of bounds. Ferronado wanted to go quickly there. Uh, but his teammate in Campbell Walsh wasn't really paying attention and that, mean that meant that handball from Ferranado just had to trickle over that boundary line and Greensboro would really like to, to get a late goal here just to extend that margin out. Centre wing, boundary throwing on the broadcast side. Cam Wild can't get the handball away so we'll have another stoppage. 23 minutes gone in his second term. Howard got the tap away. Ferranado, Brindley, snapping ball inside 50. Running back with the flight to take the intercept is Liam Middleton. Who will look to go laterally with this kick. Finds Chris McCabe. And he'll complete the switch and get it all the way to Darcy Stewart. Or Jack Stewart, Stewart I should say. Two Stewarts today. Two Middletons today. Two Wilds today. <laughs> Down the line they go. And McCall. They would take the mark. Not a call ahead. to play on. He's going to go down the line with this kick. Getting a hand onto it was Ben Ham for Greensboro. But, yeah, numbers converge. We'll have a ball up. I think Ersbridge have can really commend themselves in this quarter. Just... Even though they haven't scored a goal, just limiting Greensboro's forward options. And they've been the better side um, in the last five to ten minutes. Ferranado getting the clearance for Greensboro, but that ball's gone well wide, out of bounds on the full. Good luck if you're living <laughs> some of the apartments over the outer side because that ball has almost gone right over there. So I reckon a new footy well and truly due. Certainly, and... In this time, um, Hurstbridge now have to look to capitalise uh, because they've had the, their opportunities. Um, I think going into half time ahead on the scoreboard uh, would be so pivotal uh, just because 
we know how damaging that win can be, so it would be very pivotal uh, from a psychological standpoint as the ball looks to be retrieved by a well, uh, little fella. They've done well, because I would have thought by now you'd just go and get a new one. Certainly. Well, maybe not. Might be another footy that we've retrieved that's not the match ball, actually. <laughs> well, I would have thought that we would have a second ball by now. Considering that ball's gone well over the fence. There's a ball being kicked. There we go. We've got a new one. Now. We've got there a new one go. coming in now. So we should be okay to resume play. And now got no, two, two, now the two original ones come back. So <laughs> yeah. that's how it always works. You get none for a minute, and then you get two or three at the same time. <laughs> that's it. So that's the place we will have it centre wing out of side. 26 minutes about to tick over. Chipping ball's a good one to Blake Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. So he's going to send it deep inside 50. Lots of flies from all sides. Front and centre is Cookson. Has to go backwards here. Back to DeClays. 40 out from goal. Chipping ball to Cam Wild. Wasn't 15. Inside. Still a chance for Hurstbridge. Will be cleared by the Borough, but only as far as Liam Middleton. Middleton gets past Seavers, tries to get past another defender, and he does. Liam Middleton hangs in the air enough for Greensboro defenders to get a hand onto it. Spills all the way back to Cam Wild. He shrugged the tackle. He is Cookson. Just couldn't get past a couple of Greensboro forwards or defenders, and we'll go again. Great intensity there from Hurstbridge. Just in that passage of play, as it looks like a free kick has been given yeah. away in favour of Greensboro. Some more ill-discipline coming from Hurstbridge here. And a forward 50 stoppage will be another rebound 50 for Greensboro. So, a bit of a blow. So, go towards the outer side. Seavers front spot. But there's a hold free kick here. It's going to Hurstbridge. So, Jake Wild will go again here. Can they get one before half time? Gave it off to... Hymas, who goes even wider. Bridges send a floating ball towards half forward, and then the boundary line beats all comers. But if it stays like this at the main break, Tim, you'd have to say Hurstbridge with a slightly upper hand despite trailing. Yeah, I think absolutely. Um, they've definitely reclaimed control in this second term, and I think I'd be a little disappointed not to put that more impactfully on the scoreboard but they've still got time with a few minutes left to go Andrew Narco tackled immediately by Cookson spilled away to Cookson he's been great today got a handball over to a teammate now Perrin just measures the kick didn't quite get to a teammate back to Dane Middleton now he's handball to Cookson geez he's just so good at evading all tacklers got the handball away to Agosta and it was a dangerous tackle on Cookson as he disposed of the footy. He's going to play on quickly because he's got McCall in the pocket who leapt. Didn't take the mark. Still numbers with Hurstbridge. Machete to Blake Fitzgerald from the boundary line. And across the face, it won't register a score. And at his half time at Preston City Oval. Well, if you had the benefactory of hindsight, and you knew Cookson there who won the free kick. You'd just take it and that extra... 10 seconds there and you're having a shot on the siren but not to be, it's going to be a half time lead of 3 points for Greensboro 4-5-29 to 3-8-26 